In the past 10 years, the Nigerian's real GDP growth averaged 2.01% in the second quarter of 2023. Our economy grew by 2.51% with a slight improvement compared to the 2.31% growth in the first quarter. So we are growing despite the world challenges. The country's GDP per capita is estimated at 4,700 US dollars. The economy is increasingly being diversified with the services sector contributing 58.4% to the GDP while the agriculture sector contributes 23.0% and industries only 18.6% as at the second quarter of this current year. Our economy is making great progress with reforms, particularly in areas of the fiscal management of our economy, monetary policy, and the market as the determinant of prices. The economy is projected to grow by an average of 2.9%, almost 3%. But the current Nigerian government is looking beyond that, looking at 5 6%. By looking beyond, you will make it two digits as you get one digit growth to let you know the ambition of the current administration in Nigeria. We have a new boss in town who means business. And this event is happening at a good time. Or like a time when nothing will happen. This is a time where all things will happen. And this is time for the Baka region to get into Nigeria and make a difference and tap into the potentials that we have there in Nigeria. Opportunities. The economy has huge opportunities and potential. Of the estimated 1.3 billion people in Africa, 1.3 billion people in Africa, Nigeria has over 200 million, about 220, 230 million people. We have over 200 million people, between 200 to 230 million people in Africa alone, and in Nigeria alone, and Lagos State has over 23 million people. Lagos alone, 23 million people. Some say 24, some say 25 million people. So that's the place to be and make money. Why allow only Indians and Chinese to make all the money? Why can you can also be part of those who make money? The economy is so good because our population, the size of 225 million, which is about 17.5% of the region in Africa. Out of every five Africans, one is a Nigerian. That's how big we are. With an annual population growth of 2.6%. You can see our potential in the, in, the next, in the next five, 10 years as a nation. That population is enough to challenge you to come and do business in Nigeria. And the beauty is that about 55% of our population between the ages of 15 and 64 age bracket, 55% population. So we have potentials for growth. It's not a city, it's not a country of old people. More than half the population is between the age, between the age of 16 and 15 and 64. Our economy is, is uh, put in categories as a, mixed, as a mixed economy, of which agriculture, agriculture is very, very key. Trade, telecommunications, manufacturing, oil and gas, 
finance and insurance, real estate and construction are some of the major sectors. I have a paper here that will take a year to read. But let me save you the pressure of being here for a year to read my paper. So I'll just make sure I just give you the, the highlights of the paper. I've told you in principle the major areas and many other areas. We are open for business as a nation under a new controller in charge of our economy, a man who is putting the right people in the right places to make things better. The oil and gas is a country's status, is a major area of business. Oil and gas, we are the key country in Africa in that area. We are very, very powerful in OPEC. So why sleep? Come and make money in Nigeria. Gas demand in Nigeria is another big one, projected to grow at 2.5 billion cubic feet per day by 2030. Gas. Those are areas where you can make good money in Nigeria. Also in relation to marine and blue economy, out of the estimated 40,000 kilometers of coastline in Africa, Nigeria makes up about 53 kilometers of that coastline. This coastline equals a maritime area of 290 square kilometers, or almost one third of the nation's land area of 94 square kilometers. Beyond the strategic importance, 80% of Nigeria's coastline is made up of oil and biodiversity rich Niger Delta region of Nigeria. There's a lot of potential in the area of oil and gas in Nigeria for you to come, and, to come and make money. You are aware of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement with the 1.3 billion people in Africa. Nigeria alone has over 10% of that population. That shows how powerful we are in Africa. Apart from the population, we also have the mineral resources and very energetic people, hardworking people and young people. I want to appeal to you to close. Invest in Nigeria. Nigeria is the largest market and has the most to benefit your region. I strongly appeal to the businesses and investors in the Balkan region to come and invest in Nigeria, a land of possibility and profitability. Two good P's, profit and possibilities, and probabilities. Three good T's, three good P's you can look at. There are several investor opportunities and the current administration is doing a lot to remove the red tape in business, open up new opportunities, and try to enhance the ease of doing business in Nigeria. In the past, just concluded G20 meeting, La Francisca has told you, our president expressed Nigeria's commitment to play a very crucial role within the G20 going forward and contribute to shaping a more equitable world. He called for global unity and cooperation in tackling pressing challenges, fostering inclusiveness, and establishing a fairer world order. The arc of the meetings he had with the leaders in the US brought us close to 14 billion US dollars in investment. And he went to UAE. Most of the challenges we had in the past have been removed. And because they have been, UAE have been missing Nigeria because of our potentials in Africa, 
now they are coming big way to invest a lot in Nigeria. I want to appeal to you, take advantage of these open doors. This is a Nigeria now like we have never had before. Because it's under a new sheriff. A new sheriff is, is in town as a person in charge of the Nigerian economy, a private sector person, a former, a former boss of an air company in Nigeria, is now our president. In two seconds, one good project I brought here, which I've already told the, um, our ambassador here, is the first Lagos Convention and Exhibition Center. It's the first one. It's been done by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and the Nigerian government and the Lagos State government. Lagos State government gave us a big area of land in Lagos. This will be the first in West Africa. Once you have it, thank you. <laughs> Most of the countries in Africa, in West Africa, will come to do conventions in Lagos because of this possibility. Because of this possibility. So a lot of people have been showing interest in this. I, I told them that the back region take advantage and come and be our major support. It should be investors from here, with the Lagos State government as a shareholder, you as a shareholder, and Chief of Commerce as a shareholder. We have a very good company that has been incorporated that will handle the business of this community center. It's in the new Lagos of Lagos, near the new Lagos airport, that the new plant constructed. And now work has so this is a bigger area. I want to go back to Nigeria to see that we have investors that will do this. Thank you very much and have a good day. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Olawale Cole. Um, it's good to hear about the dynamism, growth, and youth of the Nigerian economy, and especially Lagos, and to uh, hear about the plans for Lagos Expo. Uh, when would that? Uh, when would you plan to open uh, the expo? Well, as soon as we st as soon as we start, that would determine when we we'll, is that uh, it will well is a project that would cost that would take a couple of amounts, like two years, to the four months they are about to construct. Because it's a big thing. We have the hospitality, need the hotels and everything, and the surrounding, and it's a new part of Lagos just coming up. So in the next two, three years, once you have the funding right, that place, that can be in place. We don't have anything close to it in West Africa. Super. So certainly Serbia is hosting um, Expo in, I think, March to August 27? 27, yes. So um, certainly there are investors, uh, infrastructure companies that could be taking in interest in other Expo-related projects. Yeah around the world, specifically in Africa, if uh, there's no other um, uh, service or facility that can provide that. So that's certainly something to look into. At the beginning, um, Dr. Michael made mention that the intention today is to leave with pragmatic actions that can um, improve the trade and investment relationship between both regions. Um, so I'd like to ask the floor what they think could be done to uh, make such improvements, if anybody has anything to uh, say about that. I risk asking a question of no one answering, of course, so. Uh. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Sinisha Andrich, and I came from Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, we didn't wait. Uh, for such a meeting, uh, we already a few years ago made a great uh, cooperation with uh, companies from Nigeria. And thank you once more for inviting us on such a great event. Uh, my question is for uh, Mr. Ma Dr. Michael, uh, that uh, can you uh, target uh, 
few key, key points because uh, inflation rate in uh, Nigeria, which is a fast growing market, is in, in this month, I think, uh, on an annual basis, like 25%. And even, even if it's the uh, most uh, fast-growing market in the world, and in Africa especially, uh, how will uh, it reflect, on your opinion, on the key points for investments that Her Excellency mentioned in, in her opening speech? Because, you know, we have a few different industries here that are sitting, so we have to see what are your thoughts on those, those, those specialty bases. Thank you. I'm not quite sure I got that question very well. So we were talking about the uh, inflation um, and how that may affect, affect uh, investments in, in Nigeria and the economic prospects of Nigeria. Is that the, if, it will, yeah. if, it will, if it will affect? Yeah. Well, we all know that inflation uh, is now like a global terror. America, that been used to things like one, two, three percent, now have up to 10 percent at a point. Now, coming back, coming back a, little bit, a little bit. Also, England, that will talk of two, three percent, is now looking at uh, seven, eight, nine percent. At the point, at the point it went over, well over 10 percent. The world is try, trying to tame inflation. But uh, we have not been able to tame the way we behave that cost war. Because we, are, we know that the global inflation we now have has been really challenged by the Russian Ukraine uh, situation. And that has made things very, very tough. So the more we can live in peace with ourselves as people of the world, the better the world will be. Because totally, the inflation element of the world will not carry. The major contributor is the Russian-Ukraine uh, situation. The major is not, that is not there. We by now will be having an easier world to manage with inflation. In Nigeria, the inflation figure has gone a lot higher, over 20 percent, to what we have in the past. But like I've said, the beauty of, the, of us in Nigeria is that we have a new sheriff in town. They are trying to do all they can to tame inflation through good fiscal and monetary policies. And I'm very confident that the next one or two years, we'll have a brand new nation. We have a brand new nation. I'm very confident. All things been for what I see, <clears throat> of the actions taken so far, we have a brand new mission. So inflation will be there, but uh, I also know that uh, the, the world will be as better or will be as good as we, all, as we all make it. So the more of conflicts we avoid in the world, and the more peaceful the world is, the better the world will be for all of us. You know, so for inflation, Nigeria is, is doing her best to tame inflation. Because it will have impact in the cost of all these projects we are talking about. So what's happening there, the figures are very high compared with the, even the high 7 8% you have in Europe or in America. We are still far, far from there. But we are, but we are doing everything possible to reduce that, that figure and break it down. Thank you. So um, I'd like to move on to Your Excellency um, and for you to give us a summary, really, and a presentation on um, the, the roadmap for foreign investment in Nigeria and uh, the strategies that Nigeria will be putting in place under the new leadership. I think it should work. Can you hear me? That... Yep. Thank you, um, James, for giving me the floor again. I'm not sure this is working. Okay. Um, 
So I would just like to follow on, on what um, the last speaker has talked about in terms of areas that would be of importance. He's helped me very greatly by giving an overview of um, the economy in Nigeria. But I want to maybe now focus more narrowly on the things that might be of interest to the group that is presented here. Um, the main sectors that I think we want to focus on that are fast developing in Nigeria and that fit in with the president's um, approach. <coughs> of course, we know about uh, petroleum and agriculture, but I want us to look at the telecommunications area, which is very, very important. IT, Nigeria is doing fantastically well in IT. And why do I want to ha focus on that? It's not just investment in Nigeria, but it's also collaboration with Nigerians outside Nigeria, because on the African continent, at least, Nigeria is always tops in terms of what it's coming out with in the area of technology. In the area of fintech, the um, technology related to finance and banking, it's much has been developed there. So you find now that in the rural areas, in the smaller towns in Nigeria, you are able to do immediate banking, which is something that in many parts of Europe and America you really don't get. You can go into the markets in the rural areas, many, many hundreds, thousands of kilometers away from where you are, and do your shopping. I do my shopping here in Nigeria. I ask somebody, I say, look, I want to buy X, Y, Z. So what happens? She goes into the market, regardless of where it is. She sends me a picture of what I want to buy. Do you like this? Do you like that? Ah, no, no, no. Yes, I do. OK, send your money. Immediately, it is sent. The buyer sees it, collects it. The goods are exchanged. The market, the, um, your account is debited, and, and that's done. The central bank also has started um, like a kind of wallet where you can immediately have access to... The closest thing I can say is, but it's not. It, it, that's not the right term, but what it is is a currency system that the central bank has developed. So this is an area that is calling for investment in Nigeria, but more importantly, there's avenue for collaboration globally. So I want us to look at that for the people in this room. Secondly, pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceutical industry is growing leaps and bounds in Nigeria, and in this region, this is an area that is um, one of the things that this region is strong in. I know that in Bosnia, for example, Bosnia is very strong in the area of pharmaceuticals. Um, I'm just going to talk about Bosnia because I'm not so sure whether it is as strong in other areas, but these are things that Nigeria is doing extremely well in and a lot of homegrown pharmaceutical industries are developing and that's an area for investment and the uh, Mr. Dada please I have this document please I no no you, you don't need to come but I'd like to have it um, circulated because it tells about incentives that the government is giving to different areas of um, possible investment then um, real estate, real estate and construction. There's a lot of scope for real estate and, and construction. And I want to take that in collaboration with tourism. This area, this Balkans is very well known for its tourist attractions. Um, I mean, Croatia is known all over the world. 
And so strategies and technologies, and so those are things that can be discussed. We've talked a lot about Lagos. Lagos has very similar geography to this area. And so there is um, possibility. Of course, Lagos is an island. And so we've got all the waters, the, the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and there are many pockets of water right through Nigeria, which I'm going to come back to. So how can you make Nigeria more um, of a tourist attraction? We've now also got a new Ministry of Tourism, which tells you how important this has become for Nigeria. We've got the first Minister for Tourism. This is something that Nigeria is taking very seriously. So for people in this room, these are areas in which you want to consider. Um, online education, um, and of course, energy, uh, solar energy, and um, other kinds of renewable energy. It's no secret, Nigeria is very seriously challenged in terms of its um, supply of electricity. So this is something that we need to get done, and we need to get done very quickly and very efficiently. This is an area for collaboration here. Um, I want to also take this time to say Nigeria at this moment is not so much interested anymore in straightforward buy and sell. You come, you know, you come you buy raw materials, you take it away. No, we're looking for long-term investment, and that's why there's incentives to encourage you. One of the things that is easier now, and that, which is why um, Mr. President was so successful in the UAE is that with the removal of subsidies, again, something that we can talk about later, with the removal of subsidies, which has had a big impact on inflation because things have become very expensive, the, the foreign exchange has gone high. But the big benefit is that now it's very easy to get your money out. So as an investor who has invested money and wants to be able to take out their uh, profit, their dividends, it's much easier to do that now, you know. And with the stabilization of the economy, when it's more, um, it, it has understood the impact of the removal of the subsidies, you're going to see a stabilization of foreign exchange rates itself. So, Yes, the first few months, one year, may be a bit rocky, but everything is going to be going down in the expected way. So, as I said, removal um, of the subsidies on oils and um, the collapse of the two-tier system means that investors can get their money out. I just want to say one more thing. Um, We've talked a lot about Lagos State, but I want to remind you that Nigeria is a country of 36 states plus the federal capital territory. And each of those 36 states has its own um, strengths in terms of its resources. Um, so there are opportunities in different areas. If you're looking at the north, cattle, cattle rearing, and in the south also, different types of cattle. So I know that, for example, in this area, and, and Hungary, I know, you've got pork and, and you've got chicken. So there are areas where those types of animals can be reared very easily, and there, there's opportunity for collaboration in those areas. And each uh, maybe I'm not sure whether each of the states, but most of the states now have an international airport. So communication in terms of movement of people and also movement of goods is 
much easier. And there's been development of infrastructure. So movement of goods from one state to the other state has been greatly improved. So I thought these were the things that I should talk about for the people who are gathered here today to help you in making your decisions about the areas that you think can be of interest to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for clarifying the sectors of uh, most interest for investment and trade. Um, and certainly, we had a few in, uh, inquiries from participants that weren't able to attend today uh, from North Macedonia, Montenegro, for example, that were very interested in investing in um, or trading in pharmaceuticals. Um, we have somebody coming later in uh, interested in developing fintech and digital banking and payment platforms to improve diaspora remitt remittances back to Nigeria, for example. Um, we have inquiries on educational technology and medical technology uh, to improve remote delivery of services in education and healthcare. Um, so just to open out to the participants here, whether there are other sectors um, or any comment people would like to make about um, how you know investing in in Nigeria and whether that's an opportunity. Hello, my name is Maya Jankic. I'm president of Association for Advancement of Clinical Research of Serbia. So I understand because. Uh, uh, Serbia is connected to some countries in the European Union, that clinical trials in Nigeria are also growing, that your agency for drugs and uh, medical devices is uh, showing real success uh, lately, having a lot of trials. I've seen studies uh, with, uh, which giving uh, exact numbers which are really growing, and Nigeria is really, uh, let's say, uh, um, one of the countries, definitely country leading in this area uh, in, uh, in Africa. So uh, I believe maybe this is one of the fields because uh, you've mentioned uh, pharmaceuticals and I believe this may be important for us because we have, for example, know-how of Europe, of, um, of the FDA, America, and we can connect in this area, you know, through uh, um, both knowledges and, um, and uh, I understand that uh, there is a lot of uh, new um, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, coming to Nigeria and I believe that there will, we will have also Nigeria's companies, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals companies growing. So can you please just uh, comment? If I understand you right, you want me to comment on pharmaceutical... Uh, and the special area, which is development of uh, pharmaceuticals. Okay. Um, I'm going to combine pharmaceuticals also with um, skin care and, and uh, cosmetics and, and so on, because that's also something that is closely allied. In Nigeria now, the areas of generic, generic um, medicine, particularly the ones for headaches and so on, that's very, very well established. And, and a lot is going on there. So I think what um, may be of particular interest would be machinery equipment um, that would be needed to do it on a large scale. What I see is happening is more um, small scale. Uh, so the ability to scale up and, and get in at the big business end, that is where there's um, opportunity. I think there's also a lot of opportunity in terms of research. Research is not a sexy area, <laughs> so people don't like to kind of go into it. But 
if there is um, people who are if there are people who are willing to go into research, there's a lot of government incentive in there, and the first I think five or ten years afterwards, you're allowed to make your money. That is something that is obviously long term, but there is a lot of scope there. There's also something that is going on in Nigeria that maybe people don't know much of, and that is in the area of genetic genetics, an African genetic database. In the past, we've been relying on genetic database that is for maybe Caucasian, Western um, cells and so on. This is not my area of specialty, but I do know that. <laughs> So this is an area that a lot is going on. There's been a lot of investment there, and it's been on for at least a decade. So this is another area where there is room. And Nigeria now has begun to realize that we actually must spend a lot of time investing in, in research. And it's not just research for pharmaceuticals, if I can just expand. There's also research for plant, plant development and, and um, substitution of, of um, what do you use? Fertilization, using bacteria as opposed to um, chemical fertilizers. So in that area, I think that's what we'd like to see. Super, thank you. Certainly, I think we've got a couple of people active in medical technology um, and I believe uh, they'll be making a contribution some of the workshops later. Okay. Thank you also for clarifying and uh, about the investment incentives and we'll look forward to circulating that amongst the participants later. Sorry. Well just to add a word or two. Um, I want to say that the setting in Nigeria now is open to virtually all, all business possibilities. If there's no business you want to do in Nigeria that, that, is, that is legitimate, that you cannot do now. An area, artificial intelligence, is becoming a major area now of concentration. So I'm just saying that AI and many other things are coming up in the area of you know, telecommunication, in the area of uh, tourism, like my sister said. There's so much to do in that country. Yes, we are the biggest economy in Africa with that level of GDP, but that GDP level can be doubled, can in fact can be tripled easily if you open up our potentials, and there's so many of them. Many of our young people are now outside creating wealth for other nations and also for Nigeria because they give back to the society uh, through FDI. We have now seen that the biggest money we make now is from Nigeria's diaspora paying back into Nigeria money they are making abroad. So I want to appeal to you, this is not the time to sleep anywhere in the world, in Nigeria, over, 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 over Africa. And Nigeria is a place to be. That population of close to 230 million is very, very tempting to many world, to many countries of the world. We can sell it, we can sell to two over two hundred million people. That's a lot of potential. Please, I want to appeal to this region. This is the right time to wake up and call. Big time to Nigeria. You can't go wrong. And let me close by saying when you are coming, make sure you deal with reputable companies who are members of the Chamber of Commerce. It may be Lagos, like uh, my sister has told you, every part of Nigeria has potentials. There's hardly anywhere 
in Nigeria that you don't have something to do. In the area of mining, a lot is happening in the north of Nigeria, the mining. Big time. And people are just staying there and making money. And they are mostly foreigners. Silent money, good money in the area of mining. So what are we doing here? I'm very happy this is coming up. But don't let it be a, top, a talk show. Let it be a show that will be backed up by action lines, action, action lines, action time, and, and timelines. What we want to do, and how we want to do it, and at what time we plan, we plan to do it. So that in another year or two, you can say business between Nigeria and the Balkan region becoming something important to mention in our uh, business in our, in our business relationship uh, experience. So I just want to conclude by saying any business you have that is legitimate, Nigeria is open. Thank you. I just want to ask a question. You know, like, uh, are there plans some uh, uh, new investments in infrastructure, like electricity or like internet in Nigeria? Because we heard that there is a big issue regarding that, and this is a big issue for the investment. If you want to invest, if you want to build something, or you want to build software, you want to do a research or whatever, you need to have internet and you can need to have electricity. And as we know, you know like yesterday was a big power cut national wide. You know, electricity problems, you know, so I'm just saying, is there a plan from the government to do something about it, you know, like so, because I think that will be bring more investors, you know, some kind of infrastructure project, and you can bring more investors, even you can bring investors for the infrastructure projects like this, you know, like so it's a, it's a big thing, it's a big deal. And that can bring, when you say, when you say Nigeria invested, you know, in infrastructure, then the investors are just gonna come, because they can work easily there. So I'm just asking questions, is there a plan for that, and some kind of development, or just? Thanks. Yes, thank you. My name is Tihomir Mirdivik, and I am a satellite communication engineer, uh, involved for so many years in the activities of UTELSAT. Uh, there is no fear about uh, doing business in Nigeria because there is facilities from Africa Connect, a uh, uh, filial of Utilsat that uh, put internet connectivity with appropriate uh, bitstream connection all over Nigeria and all over Africa. So there is th this is not the problem. Thank you very much. That's good. Thank you. Would you like to make any final? I'll just say Thank sure. you for that ad additional information. I had mentioned earlier on about the area of uh, electricity. It is still a challenge. It's one of the main areas of focus in Nigeria right now uh, in terms of the infrastructure that has to be improved. Transportation, electricity, very, very important and various alternative um, sources of power as well. So this is an area also for investment and um, collaboration. So it, it's not just a question of uh, the money, there's also the intellectual collaboration and technical, but definitely this is a priority in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan.
we'll have a chance to talk further about your uh, remote diagnostics plans in, in West Africa. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are slightly overrunning. We're, um, I think we're going to be around 15 minutes for this section over. Um, but I think it's important that we move ahead. And Mr. Yasaspaj, would you like to take us through um, your plans in Bosnia? And uh, you, you said that you had some experience of working with Africa. Um, uh, take us through uh, your thoughts on how we can improve the trade investment relationship in your market. that I spoke here today uh, in this uh, conference. And uh, I will, you know, I'm, I'm coming from Federal Chamber of Economy in Federation Bosnia-Herzegovina, but uh, I think that we need here to speak generally regarding to our region in Southeast Europe or Balkan region. Uh, uh, together today with me is my colleague from Chamber of Commerce, Republic of Srpska, uh, also one of our colleagues which is Executive Director of uh, Foreign Investor Council in Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, the everything which I sp uh, which I will speak today, also you can see, you can hear from colleagues from Chamber of Commerce, Republic of Serbia. Everything is similar, you know, and uh, it's very important that all of us, the Chamber system, think about about regional Chamber system. Uh, absolutely, be, uh, when we uh, listened about the numbers. Uh, 225 m m million people in correlation with us. It's really, really funny to make correlation. You know, uh, we understand it. Uh, or for complete Africa is 1.3 million uh, people. Three, three billion. billion. Yes, three billion. Uh, it's, it is, it is very, very important. The, uh, the company, uh, okay, Chamber of Commerce of Federation is non-governmental, non-profit association, like in all other countries and we promote the activities from our membership to help them to promote uh, the market uh, inside in Bosnia and outside of Bosnia and outside of region and try to help them to recognize some additional chance for all of them. Uh, uh, this is because th this is the great benefit of this event to introduce each other to, uh, to growing up of friendship uh, and uh, make additional business, business networking. The, the most important uh, rules of all chambers is networking, business networking. And my, uh, my suggestion for, we will, uh, we will have, I, 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 uh, I expected many additional activities after that, separately, directly, individual, from company to company and so on. It's very important that all way through the Chamber of Commerce systems. In that case, you can prove absolutely in information. In that case, you can uh, find uh, from, with our filtering, the, re the real information about companies, that, w that we can make some additional checking for. Okay, you can find in some uh, internet or some other agency uh, uh, inf uh, financial information about this company. But very important is to, to listen from, uh, from people which work together with them. Uh, all our secretaries in our, in our association in chambers, we have more than 25 different associations from different sectors. All secretaries uh, work directly with all companies. Uh, because that, uh, because that I, I mentioned that it's important to speak about Southeast Europe as region. You know, this region uh, can use several important resources uh, because it's very, it's close to the, if we can uh, mention the, the maybe most important market, European Union, with 500 million consumers. In, when we speak about that, you cannot speak about Balkan region or a small region. Uh, because regarding to all our country, all Central European Free Trade Agreement uh, uh, are for Balkan region, this is so-called SEFTA. It is 30 million consumers. Free Trade Agreement with Turkey, additional 80 million consumers. Uh, preferential trade agreement with all European Union country, it is additional 500 million consumers. In that case, uh, uh, we spoke about uh, uh, corridors between one strong market in Africa, a uh, big market as Nigeria, also we mentioned uh, African continental free trade area. You know, also, if you have free trade agreement in our region, 
Nigeria also has additional free trade agreement. It means that this two big hub can be connected through the Balkan region. You know, uh, from uh, last 20 years ago, uh, all our countries implemented the trade liberalization with Europe Union, and uh, all Southeast Europe economy, uh, today we can say that they are generally classified as open economy. Accordingly to our uh, geographic position and uh, proximity to European Union markets, uh, many free preferential trade agreements make our region as very favorable for business relationship. It means uh, if some businessman from Nigeria has to plan to, if I have, can use this, this word, attack to, to Europe Union, uh, this is the corridor. Balkan region is the corridor because we already had, already had a free trade, free trade agreement with them. 65% uh, plus, uh, of all goods produced in uh, this region, in Southeast Europe market, 65% uh, produced go to Europe Union, 15% 15, uh, 15 uh, in our region, and 20% uh, for other. Uh, in last 10 years, all countries in this region uh, 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 are focusing in, on structural reforms in institution. And uh, it is, we spoke about, okay, uh, it's very impressive to, to listen to the numbers uh, of kilometer of codes, for example, <laughs> 850 kilometers when we have, I mean, 20 kilometers in Bosnia. <laughs> yeah. But uh, because that I, 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 I'm not uh, come in this trick and to speak about our numbers, I will speak about samples, for example. Everybody knows Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo drives the bi special bicycle produced in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, this is the sample what we what is possible in this area. The most popular uh, Sweden Sweden bloggers and, and uh, journalists, both in nature in forest, the one uh, uh, mobile house complete produced from this region. A ski uh, championship with skiing. Uh, the the old winners use the skiing and ski shoes Fisher produced in Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, we are a small country. Complete region is small. You know. But it's, uh, uh, you, today you cannot find, for example, any Euro European brand of car without parts from this region. And uh, the, this, is, this is important. And also, in, uh, we have uh, complete region has the great experience uh, with working in engineering services in uh, with Africa. Of course, in the, during the period of, of ex Yugoslavia, but also today exists some company which already work with some of countries in Africa. Uh, for example, one uh, one uh, uh, one of them also uh, work engineering in Cisco for uh, terminal autom automation system for oil, oil and gas uh, institution in, in in Africa. I I saw that oil oil and gas is very very. Uh, very big uh, potential, and all infrastructure projects in these sectors, uh, for example, I mean that these companies from Bosnia and Herzegovina and complete from from region can be included in this. I have I have the, the, the complete details of this country, this these companies, all these companies already make exploring together with us the market in in in, in there, and uh, also. Uh, uh, you spoke about uh, pharmaceutical industry. Also, it's very important. Pharmaceutical industry in the complete Balkan region is very good. All of uh, the most of them are exporter, and uh, in, in spoke with them with exploration of uh, pharmaceutical and drugs market uh, in, in Nigeria. Uh, we get information that uh, national regulator NAFDAC, uh, yeah. yeah, uh, they uh, has the uh, rule and procedure five years plus five years for uh, for uh, trader in pharmaceutical on Nigeria market, but it's it's not it's not good. It's not enough for foreign investor, for example. When we spoke with all of them, uh, this is the reason why they don't start some the, the stronger activity in this in this market. Maybe we can we can speak talk about that. Uh, and also, it is important uh, with uh, using the chamber networking, 
to recognize so-called invisible cost during the import. You know, all country has some invisible, uh, invisible cost, but uh, if we uh, work with absolutely open hands, we, we, we need to, to each other to absolutely open all situations. Uh, I mentioned that we, we are a small region, but uh, my colleagues from uh, Foreign Investor Council can, can confirm confirmation of these sentences. In that case, in today, I don't have information that any foreign investor uh, goes out from Bosnia and Herzegovina. You know, we don't have so much, but everybody which, uh, which are here, they are stable and they, uh, 80% of them has the plan to make additional investment. And we, we need to look each other as, uh, as I mentioned, with strong potential with this technological trading corridor, you know, between European Union market and African market, that we can be in this, in this corridor. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I think one of the key points you made was around having a regional cohesive strategy to promote bilateral trade. Do you think the Open Balkan initiative is working? We have Open Balkan. We have SEFTA. SEFTA is protocol which our country already signed before more than 10, 10 years ago. And all, uh, all, if we finished with all protocols from SEFTA, uh, Central Free Trade Agreement, we don't need in some, any additional. I mean that uh, I can tell Open Balkan is political story. CEFTA is economical story. I am, I am speaking uh, in the name of uh, economic, and we are, net, we are Chamber of Commerce. Look, we have the same details sometimes. <laughs> and I, but we see each other in the first time. That's it. Super. Does anyone else have any questions about, I think we also mentioned about taking specialisms from the region to Nigeria, specialist skill sets, specialist products and services that can't be found in other markets. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts about particular strengths from the region that could be exported to Nigeria? Uh, I have a question. <laughs> um, I was wondering, what do you think needs to be done for Ni given what you've just said, to get the Nigerians to communicate with um, business people in Bosnia? It's easier. It's, it's really easier, not uh, generally with business people in, in, the, in our region, in Balkan region. Uh, for example, uh, it is the, I mentioned, the, the, the most important thing that is way through the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in the, uh, our association in Chamber of Commerce uh, established by, by, by type that we have the all company in some sector on one place. Uh, from institution Chamber of Commerce, we give them some kind of technical officers. These technical officers must recognize everything in this area. For example, some company from Niger Nigeria asked for some uh, concrete detailed requirement for import some goods, export some goods, try to find some uh, partnership for, for, for together investment, I don't know, everything, but with the, the detail, with special detail, which kind of products, which kind of services, uh, which kind of uh, business relationship, according to this re requirement, we recognize some, for example, specific company which can, we, it's not, we will not put on the website, you know, on some media or news, and with, Nigerian company asked for some additional. No, we, our technical officers in Chamber of Commerce in Bosnia, Serbia, uh, recognize who will be can good reputable uh, partnership uh, with Nigerian company. Because that I mentioned with with special company for engineering servicing in oil, in uh, oil in infrastructure projects, generally engineering services in uh, reconstruction projects, in pharmaceutical industry, and so on and so. On. Super, thank you, thanks for input. So, finally, last but not least, um, Mrs. Ariana Maximchuk, yes. CEO of Telemax. Yes. So you're actually doing work and uh, in, in the private sector, I guess. Yes. 
Um, do you want to say a bit more about your business and um, we'll then go through your, uh, your presentation. And before we do that, um, we'll be skipping ahead on the agenda. Uh, we'll break for coffee uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Thank you. you want, uh, the first of all, I want to, to, to thank you, Her Excellency, to invitation, uh, to, to invitation me in, in uh, this conference. I'm very glad because uh, my history with the Nigerian company uh, three years ago uh, started because in our business center, Telemax in Benyaluka, we have um, pleasure to have neighborhood in our business center, uh, Nigerians from Robert Johnson. And it's uh, a lot of meeting and a lot of, uh, a lot of discuss uh, was uh, three years ago with, uh, with a guy in, uh, from firm Nigeria, uh, Nigerian firm Robert Johnson. And I found a lot of, lot of a very interesting detail. <laughs> As we producer, Telemax producer, smart, uh, in renewable resource uh, producer, a lot of equipment as uh, uh, solar smart benches and, and uh, bus station, and we design and, and uh, inst uh, has installation with the solar power plant. And I'm sure that this kind of activity is very attractive for, for Nigeria market. One side, but the other side, always I, uh, I little afraid because we are so small, or our firms in Bosnia and Herzegovina is so small for big market in Nigeria. But across economic chamber and, and if, we, if we make uh, a big cluster in Bosnia, maybe we can answer on, on, on Nigeria necessary. Uh, I'm very glad uh, to have a chance to discuss uh, uh, today with, uh, with possibility and opportunity how to develop our firm, how to develop our country, and how to, to make a connection with, uh, with this. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So, um, So you've, you've worked with Nigerian uh, companies in Bosnia. What, what were the main barriers? <coughs> no, uh, no. We don't work. We have uh, only <laughs> very, very close, uh, uh, friendly relationship. We, we don't, uh, we have attention to go on, on Nigerian market. Super. Mm -hmm. So what were the barriers for entry for, uh, that, that you would see about moving into Nigeria? How could those be overcome? Uh, moving. If, if you were to invest in Nigeria, do business in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, what are the, how would you, what barriers would you see, and how would you overcome those? Do you think? Uh, if I want to invest in in, in, in Nigeria, yes. Yes. Uh, the first of all, uh, economic chamber is the first address. The the uh, we have. Uh, as I, as I uh, heard in, in history, Nigeria and Serbia has a lot of, lot of, lot of very close relationship because uh, of uh, many students from Nigeria study in, in Serbia and many people live lived in, in Nigeria. And uh, the first of all, how to say, I want to know or which country, what is the possibility, how to import, how to connect, how to, what is the, uh, the law in electricity because renewable is our area. And definitely uh, economic of chamber and embassy and uh, this kind of uh, people who is uh, present today is very, very important to for, for business uh, firm who wants to, to invest in, in, in Nigeria. Super. Mm -hmm. So um, we had some inquiries from uh, chamber representatives in North Macedonia, Montenegro. Um, and they, they can see particularly opportunities in pharmaceuticals, in renewable energy. Um, I think the, the challenges they had was not having visibility and having communication and knowing what the opportunities were 
and what were the incentives available to encourage investment. So I think that will be something to explore further. I think that's it for now. Um, unless anybody ha else has any questions or topics to raise. Of course. It's, it's really good uh, to have the information that in, in our country uh, we have so many activity regarding to renewable resources. You know. mm -hmm. Uh, uh, we have the big hydropower plants in, in, in Bosnia, and this is also absolutely independent country regarding to energy sector. But the, we are now focused on the renewable resources. We have association for renewable resources in the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, in the last week of September, uh, will be organized a Sarajevo Energy and Climate Week. Everybody can uh, look in the website, CE. Uh, S E C W, uh, and they can get everything up, information about that uh, regarding to agenda for participation. And everything it will be very uh, five days conferences, more than 200 panelists regarding to energy resources, energy uh, or project in future regarding to complete region, not only for Bosnia Herzegovina, for complete region, Southeast Europe, especially uh, according to energy community and everything. It's very interesting. All right, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of um, Siwaba and the, the partners, we want to thank our uh, special guests for your time today. And we believe that all that have been said will try and put an action plan in place. Um, so my own understanding is that, yes, there are potentials and possibilities from Nigeria, and there are interests as well from the Balkans. Um, but there is need for a platform to coordinate uh, these. Uh, based on what James ended with, there's need for visibility, knowing, and making sure that this is not just a talk show as, uh, as we've had. Uh, we, um, we have a backup plan for this. To ensure that today's meeting is not just talk show, uh, we have Nigerian Back and Business Hub which will be a follow-up to this forum. With that, we'll be able to facilitate and coordinate interest from the Balkans and relate with, we we'll work in partnership with Nigerian Embassy and it will be a great pleasure to also, since we are now partners with the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, it will be very easy for us to communicate the interest of the Balkans to your chamber, sir, and also to hear, uh, I mean, to lead the Nigerian companies through the Lagos Chamber to Balkans. Um, thank you so much for that. Are we aware that there are participants online that have questions? We will treat that after uh, we come back from, from the coffee break, before we uh, have, uh, we'll give the floor to the various chamber of commerce that are indoor. So let's meet in the next five minutes, please. And please, our break that is initially meant for 12 has been shifted to half 12. So that after the coffee break, we just come back and listen to the chamber's presentation. Then we'll go for the break. Thank you very much. See you in five minutes. Thank you. In five minutes. Five minutes for coffee break. Let's just stretch our hands. <laughs> it's impossible to take the coffee for five minutes. That. All right. Let's make it ten minutes. Welcome to the Balkans, where you have to drink coffee. <laughs> and so is cigarettes. All right, then. All right, let's meet in 10 minutes, bro. <laughs>
I will say that later because uh, like I've said, uh,